Math 13 and 14, Tyler Junior College, section 2.4, more about slope. Average rate of change. In the previous video, we discussed slope as a rate of change. When we calculate the slope as a decimal, we can say that the y variable, whatever that's measuring, increases or decreases by that amount per unit of x measurement increasing. For example, I believe the two ones that we had were the number of women who live alone increases 0.24 million per year. And in the second example, monthly salary decreased $100 per month with a negative slope. You say decreases, but you always say the slope is a positive number when you're interpreting. So in this section, average rate of change, you might think rate of change means we're doing exactly the same thing. And in, in a sense, we kind of sort of are. On the board, you see two points, 2 comma 4 and 5 comma 25. Makes for a pretty steep line. And if I ask you what's the rate of change from the first to the second point, hopefully you're thinking, well, you're just asking me for the slope. And if I figured out the slope, it would be 25 minus 5, no. It would be 25 minus 4, second y minus first y, over 5 minus 2. Well, 25 minus 4 is 21, 5 minus 2 is 3, 7. So if we were to interpret that as 7 over 1, 7 means that uh, y increases by 7 per increase, per unit increase in x, meaning the x increases by 1. Rise over run, x goes over 1, y goes up 7. I go over 1, I go up 7. I go over 1, I go up 7. I go over 1, I go up 7. So that's all slope for the roots. But what if I told you that the graph connecting these two points was not a line at all? I mean, it could have been. But I didn't pick these two points because they belong to a line. I picked these two points because there's something you can do to each x to turn it into each y. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a line that goes through these, and we could find the equation if we wanted. We know the slope. We got a point. We could build the equation using point-slope form. But the, the function, the equation that I had in mind when I put these two points up here was not linear at all. What can you do to 2 that turns it into 4, but you can do the same thing to 5 that turns it into 25? Answer, square it. The function I had in mind was actually f of x equals x squared, which would be a parabola whose vertex is at the origin and doesn't take too long to start exploding upward. Now, that looks like a line, but I promise you it's not. Now, can we talk about the slope of a parabola? Well, if you saw the video over difference quotient, you know the answer is sort of. But if not, we can still talk about it. And just for, just to make this a little easier to see, I'm going to draw this not to scale. I like drawing things to scale, but sometimes it's hard to cap make a point. So let's do something like this. And honestly, we could adjust the scale on the x and the y axis so we could really see the curvature there. So when we calculated the slope, we really calculated the slope with the line connecting these two points on this parabola. Can we interpret it for the same? Yeah, we can say on average, y increases by 7 per unit increase in x. In other words, and let me see if I can trisect the x's down here. That looks good. That looks better. So, for example, according to that slope, if we go over 1, we go up 7. Go over 1, go up 7. Go over 1, go up 7. If we, if we did a rise and run from the beginning to the end, it'll take us to the second point of the parabola. But that doesn't mean we were always going the same slope. Average rate of change is exactly what it sounds like. On average, from point A to point B, how fast was I increasing? Think of it this way. If you drive 60 miles in one hour, were you always driving 60 miles per hour? Probably not, especially if you got into the car at the beginning of that hour. Presumably the car was not moving at the time. But to say you average 60 miles an hour, 
means that from the beginning to the end, your average speed was precisely 60 miles per hour. You may have been going slower at times and faster at times, but it averages out to 60 miles per hour. It's kind of the same thing here with average rate of change. Average rate of change, I can spell, is the slope connecting two points on the graph of y equals f of x. Whether or not the graph is a line is irrelevant. You can calculate average rate of change by simply calculating the slope of any two points on a graph. Now here's the thing though. When I started this question, I gave you these two points, 2 comma 4, 5 comma 25. But I don't have to give you both points' coordinates in order to ask you a rate of change question. For example, let's say I ask you, i got stuff all over the place here. Let's say I ask you to find, and I'm going to start abbreviating average rate of change, arc. Find the average rate of change of y equals f of x, I'm sorry, of f of x equals, let's do, um, let's do the square root of 2x plus 1 from a first x value of 4 to a second x value of 40. Now, we can sketch this graph and find the two points on it and connect them, but I don't need to. All I'm being asked to do is to find basically the slope of these two points on the graph. But what am I missing? What do you need to calculate slope? You need two x's and you need two y's. I don't have two y's. I have two x's and a function. But wait a second. If you have an x and a function, how do you get the y? You substitute the x into the function. So average rate of change is just slope. If you're just waiting for a formula, here it is. It's just slope. In the denominator, we subtract the second x minus the first x. However, in the numerator, we need to subtract second y minus first y. We have neither. But if we find f of x2, that will give us y2. And if we find f of x1, that will give us y1. So if you were just waiting the formula, for the formula, here it is. So let's figure out what our average rate of change is. In the denominator, we subtract the two x's, so 40 minus 4. That's pretty easy. But in the numerator, we subtract the two function values. In this case, you know what, before I, uh, before I actually substitute into the function, let me substitute them here. We need f of 40 minus f of 4. And maybe it would be more prudent to actually work out these two function problems to the side. If we substitute 40 into the function, we get the square root of 2 times 40 plus 1. 2 times 40 is 80. 80 plus 1 is 81. Square root that, we get 9. If we substitute 4, we get the square root of 2 times 4 plus 1. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. We get the square root of 9, which is 3. So, the second y-coordinate was f of 40, which was 9. The first y-coordinate was f of 4, which was 3. And in the denominator, we still have 40 minus 4. So on the top, we get 6. On the bottom, we get 36. And this reduces to 1 sixth. So what does this mean? On average, y increases by 1 sixth when x increases by 1. When you're interpreting slope as a rate of change, you're always talking about the x increasing by 1 unit. So as x goes up by 1, the y on average increases by 1 6. Now it doesn't go up 1 6 every time, but on average. If it did, it would be a line, and that's not a linear function. So finding the average rate of change of a function is really just time the slope. But instead of giving you two x's and two y's, I'll give you two x's and a function. Go make your own y's, but then find the slope.